mergers and acquisitions, right? They're everywhere these days. It's like every time I open a news website, bam, another big company is buying another one. Yeah. And it always makes me wonder, what happens to all our data in these situations? You know, all those names and addresses and credit card numbers floating around in cyberspace. Yeah, it's a really interesting question. And it's becoming increasingly important as more and more companies hold sensitive information about us. Because you're right, it's not just about the financial side of these deals. We're talking about the very real data that makes up our digital lives. And when these companies merge, all of that data becomes a very valuable and potentially vulnerable asset. And that brings us to today's deep dive. We're taking a closer look at a company called General Accident Insurance Company, or GEANA as they're known. Mm. They're based in Jamaica and are looking to expand their business, already a big player, through a few strategic acquisitions. And this is happening just as Jamaica's Data Protection Act of 2020, or DPA, their version of GDPR, is fully coming into effect. Exactly. And this is a big deal for a company like GDNA. They already control a significant portion of the Jamaican insurance market. We're talking about a company with a 25% market share. So when you think about all the customer data they must handle, it really highlights the importance of understanding and complying with the DPA, especially as they bring in more data from acquisitions. Okay, so let's dive into that a bit. What are some of the key things that GNAET, or any company for that matter, needs to be aware of when it comes to data privacy during an acquisition, especially given this new legislation? Well, imagine you're GNAET, right? And you're in the process of acquiring another company, let's say a smaller insurance company, with its own way of doing things. So they've got their own IT systems, their own data storage practices, their own or maybe lack of security protocols. And you're trying to merge all of that with your existing systems and data. I can already see where this is going. Yeah. Potential data breach waiting to happen. You got it. Merging IT systems and data sets is one of the riskiest parts of an acquisition from a data security perspective. You're dealing with different levels of security, different systems, often on a really tight timeline, and all under the pressure of making this acquisition work. And we know those bad actors out there, the ones trying to get their hands on our data, they see this as a prime opportunity, right? Absolutely. Mergers and acquisitions are like a giant neon sign for cyber criminals. They know companies are distracted, systems are in flux, and it's a good time to strike. But it's not just about external threats. You know, mm. we've got this new Data Protection Act to consider as well, and it's got a lot to say about how companies need to be handling personal data. So let's unpack this DPA a little bit. Yeah. What are the non-negotiables that GNAC or any company operating in Jamaica needs to know about? What are the key provisions, especially as it relates to all of this M&A activity? The DPA is basically Jamaica's way of saying, hey, we take data privacy seriously and you need to as well. It sets out the ground rules for how companies operating in Jamaica or processing the data of Jamaican citizens must handle that data. Okay, so what are the biggest takeaways, especially for a company like GNAC that's about to go through an acquisition? Well, the first thing is consent. You can't just assume you have free reign over people's data. The DPA is all about making sure that consent for data processing is freely given, specific, and informed. You can't just bury it in a 20-page terms of service document that nobody reads. So transparency is key here. Absolutely. Transparency is crucial. And not just about consent. The DPA also talks about data security. We're talking encryption, access controls, all those measures that help keep that data safe from unauthorized access. And then there are those worst case scenarios. What happens if, despite all those precautions, there's a data breach? That's another important part of the DPA breach notification. There's a strict 72-hour reporting requirement meaning companies have just three days to report a breach to the authorities and the individuals affected. 72 hours. That doesn't seem like a lot of time to figure out what happened, who's impacted, and get everything reported, and especially challenging during something as potentially chaotic as an acquisition. Exactly. And that's why the DPA also talks about data protection impact assessments, or DPIAs. And I'm guessing those DPIAs become even more important during a merger or acquisition. You got it it becomes a legal requirement before those databases are merged or that customer information is transferred. They have to do their homework and make sure they're not walking into a data privacy nightmare. Okay, so we've got consent, data security, breach reporting, and these DPIAs. How does this actually play out in the real world? Let's say GeneAC is about to acquire a smaller insurance company. What does that look like through the lens of the DPA and all these requirements? All right, so let's pretend GNAC has their eye on this smaller company, maybe a local competitor. Let's call them Island Insured for fun. Like it, Island Insured. Yeah. It's a nice ring to it. Right. So 
step one for GNAC, even before the deal is done, is due diligence, but not the kind you might think. Not just looking at their balance sheet and profit margins? Exactly. Because of the DPA, GNAC has to look at Island Insured's data practices with the same scrutiny they'd give their own financials. Because ultimately, it's our data, right? right? As customers, our information is in their hands. You got it. That's why they've got to dig into Island Insured's data security, how they handle consent, have there been any breaches, all that fun stuff. So it's like a background check, but for data privacy. A hundred percent. Yeah. And here's where those DPIAs come in. Remember we talked about those? Yeah, those data protection impact assessments. Right. So let's say, hypothetically, Gene Anak finds something concerning during this due diligence. Maybe Island Insured is a little behind on security or... Their consent process isn't very clear. Not exactly DPA compliant. Exactly. That's when that DPIA becomes crucial, before the ink is even dry on the deal. So they're not just ticking boxes. They're really digging into potential data vulnerabilities. Exactly. The DPIA would map out where data flows between GeneNAC and Island Insured. What kind of data? Where is it stored? Is it encrypted? Who has access? All those nitty gritty details. And I bet that 72-hour breach reporting rule starts looming pretty large at this stage, too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Especially if they uncover a vulnerability that might have already been exploited, that clock starts ticking immediately. Yeah. That's why the DPA is so big on strong security measures. It's not optional. Nope, not at all. Genus needs to think about things like encryption, yeah, but also who within their organization even has access to what data. It's all connected. So let's imagine for a second that GNEC has done their due diligence. The DPI is looking good, no major red flags. What's next? Do they just hit merge on those databases and call it a day? Not so fast. Remember how we talked about consent being super important under the DPA? Right, specific informed consent. Yeah, so maybe Island Insured was a little looser with how they got consent before, maybe relying on those vague terms of service we all ignore. Which won't cut it under the DPA. Nope. So GNAC needs to fix it. They could ask all of Island Insured's customers to re-consent under GNAC's DPA-compliant policies, but... But people love getting those, we updated our privacy policy emails, mm -hmm. said no one ever. Yeah, it could get messy. The other option is to separate the data based on how it was initially collected, but that gets complicated fast, believe me. Sounds like a good argument for having your data privacy house in order from the very beginning. A hundred percent. Proactive is always better. And that brings us to another thing that can get tricky during mergers those outdated systems. Well, you mean the ones everyone knows are vulnerable, but no one wants to touch because they're holding everything together with duct tape and hope? You said it. Those legacy systems might work, but they probably weren't built with today's data protection in mind. Easy targets. Mm -hmm. And the DPA doesn't care how old the data is. It all needs protection. So GIAC might have to update or even completely replace those old systems just to comply. This is starting to sound like a real pain. It can be. And to really understand why companies go through all this, why data privacy is so important, it helps to look at what happens when it goes wrong. Our source mentioned some pretty scary data breach stories, things that keep CEOs up at night. Want to hear about those? So we've talked about all the things that can go wrong, all the risks companies face when it comes to data privacy during these mergers. Outdated systems, the pressure of integrating different practices, and always that chance of a data breach, which seems even more likely during a merger. Honestly, it's a bit overwhelming. It makes you just want to unplug from it all. But I'm hoping there's a brighter side to all of this, right? There is. It's not all doom and gloom, I promise. Uh -huh. A lot of what we've talked about, those vulnerabilities, those requirements, it's all about being proactive. It's about understanding that data privacy isn't just a box companies need to check. It's fundamental to doing business today. Okay, that's a good point. So how can companies like GRAN make sure they're doing things right? Not just complying, but actually protecting their customers' data. Well, we've touched on some of it, but it's worth repeating. First off, security, security, security. That's got to be the top priority. GNAC needs to be all in on strong security measures, encryption, multi-factor authentication, intrusion detection, the whole package, and those legacy systems we talked about. Time to get serious about upgrading or replacing them, making sure they meet current security standards. And timing is key there, right? It's got to happen before things get messy during the merger, yeah. right? Exactly. You're integrating systems. You're bringing in new data. That's when those vulnerabilities are most exposed. Being proactive is crucial. And then it's about communication. Being open and honest with customers, both GNAC existing customers and those coming over from Island Insured, about what's happening, how their data will be used, what their rights are under the DPA. No one wants to wade through pages of legal jargon. Keep it clear and straightforward. That's how you build trust. 
Transparency goes a long way, especially when people are already a little unsure about what happens to their data during these corporate deals. So they've tightened up security, they're communicating clearly, anything else. Training, that's a big one. You can have the best security in the world, but if your employees don't know what they're doing, it's all for nothing. GNAC should prioritize training, especially for those involved in the merger, making sure everyone understands data privacy, best practices, the ins and outs of the DPA, how to spot those red flags. Human error, it's often the weakest link, isn't it? Absolutely. And this training, it can't just be a one-time thing. It's got to be ongoing, especially as the DPA evolves and new threats emerge. Constantly adapting. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. And finally, don't underestimate the importance of that post-merger audit. After the dust settles, after the integration is complete, take a step back and do a thorough review. A final checkup, making sure everything is running smoothly on the data privacy front. Exactly. Review those data flows, test those security measures, Make absolutely sure everything is still compliant with the DPA. Leave no room for error. This has been incredibly helpful. We've covered a lot, the Jamaican Data Protection Act, the challenges companies face, the importance of data privacy. I feel like we've just scratched the surface, though. Where can our listeners go from here to learn more? Well, the source we've been discussing, the importance of data privacy in mergers and acquisitions, that's a great place to start. It has a lot more detail about the DPIA playbook, which is really helpful for those wanting to understand those impact assessments. Knowledge is power, right? Right. The more we know about how our data is being used, how companies are protecting it, the better equipped we are to navigate all of this. I couldn't agree more. And as technology keeps aliving, these conversations about data privacy are only going to become more important. It's something we all need to be aware of and engaged in. Absolutely. Well, this has been a fascinating deep dive into the world of data privacy and mergers and acquisitions. Thank you so much for joining us. And until next time, stay curious.